a couple of months ago, I sat right on the shore of this lake just a little further down and I brought to you my Sea to Summit X-Series cook set. And one part of that set was something I had not tried before and that was the Sea to Summit X-Brew coffee dripper. And uh, I was disappointed, really quite disappointed with the performance of the X-Brew that day and I said as much in the video. At the end of the video, I said I would give this a second chance, that I would go home and see if I couldn't figure out why it wasn't performing the way I expected it, and that I would bring it back to you. Well, that's what I'm going to do today. I have figured out how to make this work better, and I thought it's fair to the company that I try and show you that. But at the same time, I thought, why not show you some other options in pour-over coffee makers? So I've assembled my small collection of, of pour-over coffee makers to share with you. If you're interested, keep watching. So I'll put a link up in the corner here to that original video and probably a link at the end of it. And I've asked, people have asked me if I wouldn't do as the same and put them in the video description below. So I'll do that. So you can go back and watch that original video. But just to uh, shorten it up, my, the problem that I had with the X-Brew was twofold. First off, uh, the coffee wouldn't run through it. And uh, I'll show you the X-Brew up a little closer in a minute, but the, uh, the coffee just stagnated. It just stayed. It wouldn't pour through. And I figured that part of it out. And the other issue I had was this is the X-Series coffee mug. And, uh, you know, it's, it's intended so that you can put one on top of the other. But there is less than two millimeters clearance around the edge. So what happens is as soon as there's any weight of water and coffee inside, it tips into the cup and there's almost no way to prevent that from happening. I mean, I've tried, I really have tried a number of times to see if I could and fix that. Um, I, there is something that one of my viewers, actually two or three of my viewers suggested this, I'll, I'll share with you in a second. So those were the two issues. So number one, the issue with the, the coffee not going through the brewer. To begin with, the reason I bought this in the first place not only was it on sale the day that I bought it, but uh, I wanted to add it to my series of uh, X series from, from C to Summit. But it is a self-contained unit. What I mean by that is it doesn't require any paper filters. It has a stainless steel filter in the bottom. And I was really quite intrigued with that. No more paper filters that I'd either have to burn in a fire if I had a fire or take home to dispose of afterwards. So yeah, I, that's the reason I wanted this. Well, it turned out the reason why the coffee was not going through was because it was ground too fine for this coffee dripper. Now I say that because the grind I was using is the same grind I would use from my AeroPress and it will work well in other pour over coffee makers, but it will not work well in the X brew. So you need to use a fairly coarse grind. And I'm going to show you what that grind looks like today because I ground some for this test or for this demonstration to the uh, about as fine as you can get it and still have it run through. Even then it's kind of slow running through the coffee. That's not a bad thing because that just means longer contact time with the water, which should draw out more of the flavor. There is a balance, so too long a contact time and then you get bitterness, but uh, it, it will work much better than it did before. So that is that issue solved or at least made uh, uh, less of a problem anyway. So you just have to make sure you've got the right grind coffee. Now, the other issue with this, I have to reach up and grab these because they're sitting on a rock here. A couple people had suggested that I put something on top of the cup that would support the coffee maker. So in between the two. One suggestion was I find some very thin plastic, I cut a hole in the center, larger than obviously the drain hole from the coffee maker, and uh, make a circle, put it on top, sit this on top, and it would support the coffee maker on top of the mug. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, another suggestion was popsicle sticks. Uh, to bring along a couple popsicle sticks and lay them across the top of the cup, and I'll demonstrate, and that would also support the cup. And I said, well, popsicle sticks sounds great, except that uh, I'm a bushcrafter. So <laughs> uh, nature is full of popsicle sticks. So that's what I did today is created a couple of popsicle sticks from a dead branch and just thin little sticks. And let me demonstrate what it is that you do with these. You just lay them on top of the cup. They just have to be wider than the cup is and lay the coffee maker on top. Let's make sure I can get in close enough for you to see this. There's the coffee cup. Lay the two sticks on top. Coffee maker sits on top of that 
and it's well supported. Now it's not going to fall in and actually it's a little bit better because there's a bit of an air gap around the edge which allows uh, some of the air to come out so the coffee can go down with less resistance. All right, so that was the fix for that part of it. Now, I mentioned those were my two gripes with the coffee maker. Actually, there is uh, two more gripes. Maybe they're less of a concern now that I've gotten used to it, but they were, when I first got this, they were quite annoying to say the least. Picked up a little bit of dust there. The, one of the concerns was, and still is to a certain degree, collapsing it. So I've been using the X-Series mug for a number of years now, and I have the X-Series bowl, and I have the X-Series pot, as you can see in that other video. And, uh, you know, the, the advantage of these things is compact, lightweight. That's their, their real advantage. Silicone does help to hold in some of the heat for a little while anyway to make it, uh, uh, you know, stay warmer longer. And they have measurement gratings inside. So if you're mixing up meals like a Mountain House or a, a Happy Yak or a Wild Zora, then you've got some measurements. You can use this as a measuring cup. The nice thing, as I mentioned, is it collapses. It just collapses down to virtually nothing. And they're very light. Um, same thing should be able to say about the coffee maker, except it doesn't collapse well. I can't... And I've been doing this a lot. It's gotten better, but it is a challenge. There, I got it down. It doesn't collapse easily, and not as easily as the mug does. Uh, when I first started doing this, this leads into the other gripe that I had was, when I first started doing this, this did not want to collapse. And in trying to push it down, the filter would pop out. Now the filter is intended to come out for cleaning, which is a great idea. Every once in a while you're going to get some buildup of old coffee in there, so you want to take it out and run steaming hot, boiling hot water through it, scrub it out if you have to, to get the coffee out of the filter. So that's fine. You can take the, coffee, the, the uh, filter out. Getting the filter back in is not easy. It's ex actually quite a challenge for me anyway. Uh, the idea is that extend the mug out like this, drop the filter down inside and there's a little lip that sits around the top of the filter I may be able to show you that and then you have to literally push it in to the rim all the way around slowly working your thumb around hoping that it doesn't pop out on the other side let's see if I can give you a bit of a close-up on that so right at the base of the filter a little bit of the silicone rim grabs on to the metal filter there to hold it in place uh, it's still a bit of an issue when it comes out, but I've gotten used to it. It's gotten easier. Maybe the silicone's gotten more pliable. It's nicer when it's warm like this. The silicone is more pliable, so it's not as much of an issue. I still think it's a bit of a design thing. You know, that and the fact that it doesn't want to sit on top of this X-Series mug. With uh, See, I, it's, it just doesn't, it won't balance on top. Uh, at least safely. I mean, it will if I'm just if there's nothing in it and I work at it. But like I said, as soon as you get a little bit of water inside, it just drops inside the, the other mug. So I still think there's a bit of a design flaw with this, but I've gotten to make it work. Now, I'm I am complaining about it still, even though it's better than it was, because this is not a cheap item. So you know, I took those original concerns to the company, and I had some back and forth with the. Uh, uh, one of the staff at the company there about it and uh, you know he made measurements I made measurements we compared you know his measurements came off a little bit different than mine but what we both agreed one was agreed on was that it was just two millimeters of width in the difference between this and the, the top of the other one uh, another option for me was um, you know I could take that filter out and not use it at all then I could then I'd have to revert back to paper filters which didn't make a whole lot of sense because the reason I bought this was because I wanted to go filterless I wanted to stay with that stainless steel filter so we went back and forth and uh, you know I gave it the best shot that I could it's workable it works now as I'm going to demonstrate in a minute with those modifications as that modification of the two sticks but the company offered to send me something that they thought might be a better combination and I agreed because I thought it's worth showing you and that is they have another series within the X series it's called this X seal and go so they sent me their X seal and go mug and it looks very much like the regular mug except it has a screw on lid and it's a waterproof, it has a nice ring, it's a hard plastic top, a little silicone gasket around the outside. Otherwise, it works exactly 
like this one. But there's a difference. Not only does the lid screw onto this one to keep you from losing your contents and keep it warm longer, but it is slightly bigger around to, a, to accommodate the lid screwing into it like this. And it doesn't take much, that's it. And it, that's waterproof, I've tried it. It's, you know, nothing's gonna fall out of it. So it does what it's designed to do. The, the gentleman at the company I spoke to thought this might be a better match to go with the X-Brew. And the reason being is, it sits down inside on the first level, the first shoulder right here. It sits there securely, and now it's not gonna fall in, and I'm not gonna lose my coffee, it's not gonna spill all over the place, tip the cup over or anything else. So, if you have one of these, you're experiencing the same issue I have with this mug, you can do one of two things, you could use the two sticks like I'm gonna to do today, if you're looking to buy one of these or you own one of these, but you'd like to add one of the X-Series mugs to it, look at the X-Seal and Go mug with the waterproof lid on top because I think you'll find that that will be a better combination for this. Okay, so that's the X-Series, but I did say that I was going to show you a number of different items or a number of different styles of pour-overs. I am going to use this one today for making my coffee because I want to show you it working at its best, but a few other options out there to start with, and uh, th these will range in price and in weight and in compactness. There's a little bit of a give and take on that, but what I'll do is I'll put a little chart in the show notes if you're interested for the prices of each of these items and where you can get them and that type of thing. Um, probably one of the cheapest items on the list is an old school Melita uh, single cup pour over device. Uh, I've don't know if I paid more than two dollars for this. I know I've seen them in the grocery stores lately for about four or five dollars. It's just a very simple pour over. It does take a paper filter. It will sit on top of your cup. It's not going to dump over. The only downside is the size. You know, literally that's the only reason why I don't carry this one is that it's, it's not a compact item. Otherwise it works just fine. However, I did find something, and I've used this in other videos, and people have seen these and, and mentioned them to me as well. And this is a silicone coffee maker, similar to the X-Brew, except it does not have a stainless steel filter in it. It is just a simple silicone cone like this. It takes a paper filter. It has two drain holes at the bottom, sits on top of your cup, $1 at the dollar store. And uh, yes, they're still available. So Dollarama here in Canada, I picked this up for $1. Uh, you still have to use paper filters, so you have to do something to dispose those. Don't leave them in the nature. Either burn them or bring them home and compost them. But uh, yeah, so this is still a very viable option. I'll still take this if I, if I uh, know I'm gonna be able to do something with the filter afterwards. But yeah, $1. I have seen this same coffee maker, this same pour over silicone coffee maker, branded on Amazon, uh, can't remember the brand name. I'll we'll put it in the show notes below at about four or five dollars. So it's not an expensive item, even if you're overpaying for it. But likely, if you've got a Dollarama or another dollar store near you of another name, you're like you may be able to find that. That's probably the best option. But again, you're back to paper filters. What else is there? Oh, GSI really has their game uh, right now with coffee makers, and uh, I have one I've had for a few years. It's called their Ultralight. Uh, pour over device and uh, it really does work well and it's very simple it's not the sturdiest thing in the world but it is very light and it is literally called the ultralight Java, Java drip from GSI and that's it it's a very very fine nylon screen filter with plastic legs that clip on to your mug your cup that won't fit on everything it won't fit on my wooden cooks up very easily I'm a little afraid that if I bend the plastic too far, it's going to snap, but uh, it will fit on just about everything else that, that I own. It certainly fits on my GSI cup, surprise, and it works extremely well. And it packs down and to this, and the weight, you know, when they say it weighs nothing, I think this is less than an ounce. Again, that'll be in the show notes below. So that's a very compact, easy to use uh, item. The only thing is you got to clean it out. So when you're finished <laughs> using it, make sure you wash it out. Maybe a little soap and water, maybe at the lake's edge, get all the coffee out of it. Then put some boiling hot water through it so that you sterilize it and you don't uh, uh, leave any of the oils of the coffee behind. So that's the only downside to this. Otherwise, it's an excellent little coffee maker. GSI has another coffee maker. This one is much larger, 
but oh, well, I guess I should show you the whole thing. Another Java Drip coffee maker from GSI. Silicone, similar in nature to the Sea to Summit item, but it does not have an internal stainless steel filter. But that's a big one. You know, you can make two or three cups of coffee or a small pot of coffee with that. It has a hard plastic base to sit over your cup, your pot, or whatever. It has this lid to keep things all together. And what's nice about it is when you've you know, run your coffee through this and it's still dripping, you can lay it on top of that while it's, uh, you're enjoying your coffee before you get rid of everything later. Keeps everything nice and contained. Like I said though, the only downside to that is it does not have a filter. So you're back to using paper filters again, except GSI has another product that I came across. So GSI has, a, you know, that little, where's my little one again? The little ultralight Java drip, that material for that little one cupper. They have a full size filter, reusable filter made of the same material. And this is intended to work and works perfectly inside that larger GSI Java drip. So now I've got a reusable filter that weighs nothing and works with this one. Now, the whole set is a little bit bigger, but if you enjoy making a lot of coffee, this may be something to consider. Uh, there's a bit of a cost for this item, but it's less expensive than the Sea to Summit is. But the only downside to this, again, is rinsing it out and washing it out. And it's not a hard deal. You know, it just a little bit of rinsing out in some hot water and setting it out to dry. And it, because it's nylon, it doesn't take very long to dry and you're good to go. And it packs down to nothing. Uh, oh, speaking of the dollar store, I thought you might be interested in seeing this. When I went out and uh, checked to see if they still had these silicone drip coffee makers, I saw something else that was kind of interesting. They have these, a silicone mug slash bowl. And let me just compare it. So here's the X, or X mug from Sea to Summit, and here's the dollar store version. They're almost identical. Uh, you know, the quality is not quite the same in the silicone. It's a softer silicone or a lighter silicone. It's very flexible. It doesn't have quite the same feeling of quality, but it's close and it's big. It's much bigger, as you can see, in size. So, in fact, this can serve as both a coffee cup and a bowl. And that's why I used it one day out and have a lunch, is use it as a bowl. Collapses down nicely. Not quite as flat, but nearly as flat, but at a dollar. Nothing to complain about there. All right, what's another option? Um, these are the paper filters that I've been talking about. They're the number four filter, I believe. Could be number two. But I'll write that in the show notes below. But, you know, you take a baggie with half a dozen filters and you're good for one day. No, I'm joking. However long it takes you to go through half a dozen filters. So that's what you need to take with you if you're taking anything that doesn't have a built-in stainless steel filter or that nylon mesh filter. So here's an option that I've had. It was given to me as a gift for a while, uh, some, some time ago, actually a few years ago. They're still available though. Uh, it's, I don't know if I want to call it a pour over so much, but here's the idea and I'll show you the cover. This is made by Coglins, and it sits right on top of your coffee cup. It has a, there's a little plastic skewer, little paper filters inside. I'm gonna get one out here. And the paper filters uh, yes, you could do this with a regular one as well. The paper filters have little holes punched it through the top of them. Little paper filter, little plastic skewer, goes through the holes at the top, open it up to a little uh, cone here, like that. Put your coffee in, set it over your mug, and you pour your water through this. And it, it's, it's almost like a su suspended tea bag. So uh, is it a true pour over device? I'm thinking of it more of as a tea bag, but you know, they, have, they show it on the, on the picture using it like a, uh, like a pour over device. So I included it today. Very inexpensive, but again, you've still got filters you have to dispose with afterwards. All right, I'm down to one more coffee maker, and then we'll get to making some coffee. So this is my GSI Infinity mug. I've had it for some time. I've also got the GSI Fair Share mug of a similar design, and this one will fit right inside of that. So I've got an insulated bowl that uh, I will make you know, my reheated meals. Great for the winter time, because it'll re help me retain the heat for those uh, self-rehydrating uh, meals. 
and this goes inside has a nice lid on top with a, a little sippy lid on top so it's a nice mug but it's designed to work with another GSI coffee device called the GSI coffee rocket and they refer to this as a pour over device it is but it's uh, it, it's also similar to what most coffee people would call a drip device so I'm going to show you this I'm not going to use it today um, I will use it in other videos of course in the future because it is compact and goes nicely in that whole set but the concept here is you've got three components this being the base with fold out legs that will sit on top of the coffee mug like that a stainless steel filter and which is again the reason I bought it because so I could go filterless that sits inside of here you fill this with coffee so it's a, there's a pre-prescribed you, you can't put any more coffee than this will allow so there's a line inside that indicates this much coffee and no more so you can't make it any stronger by doing that the only thing you control after this point is your water so you have this part the hopper that goes on top coffee's in the center this sits on top of your coffee mug pour your water in and there's four small holes which allow the water to drip through the coffee into through the coffee and into your mug it's a pour pour over device at least that's what they call it but in my mind it's more of a drip coffee maker either way it works it, it's actually not bad it works pretty well but again I'll show you that in a future video because we're here today to talk about how to use the X brew to get the most out of it so after all that talking I will set the camera up and we'll make a cup of coffee okay let's make some coffee so there's my X mug. Put the two sticks on top. There's my X brew sitting on top, well supported. Now remember, this is one of the things about these X series is that because the top is wider than the base, you do have to keep an eye on it so that you don't tip it over. So keep, you know, maybe you want to support it inside of something else, but uh, they are a little prone to tipping over, so they do require a little bit of. Uh, of uh, caution there. All right, coffee today, as it has been for a good while now, is the Rampage coffee. So I ground this this morning so that it would be as fresh as possible. Let's see if I can show you how coarse that is. And that's almost uh, percolator coarse or almost cowboy coffee coarse. That's about how coarse your coffee has to be in order to work with the X brew. So uh, I know that the owner or the, the gentleman I spoke to said he uses coffee right uh, grocery store coffee. Yeah, that's quite a bit of coffee. That's about two, almost three tablespoons. There were heaping tablespoons that I just put in there. And uh, kind of put that in, shake it around. He said he uses a, you know, a pre-ground coffee and it uh, works perfectly for him. I found it had to be a little bit coarse. Water just off a boil. Now the trick with pour over coffee makers is you don't dump all your water in. You start by putting a little bit of water in with the coffee to kind of soak it up and make it swell a little bit. So start at the center just a little bit around the outside. Not a lot. Just give it a second. The coffee is going to expand a little bit. If it's really freshly ground coffee, freshly roasted coffee, you'll see a bit of a bloom on top, which is always nice to see. Uh, now that that has soaked through and soaked up the coffee, I'm going to start pouring the water in. Again, you don't pour it in all at once. You start in the center and you just pour a little bit in circles to the outside. Wait again. So you're never really fully filling up the coffee maker. Now, if you did it that way, it's not wrong. It's just this is the preferred way to get the most out of your coffee. So I can watch the coffee soak through. Uh, it's doing a good job. A little bit more. How much is going underneath? Oh, good. We're getting about... A little more than halfway full. It's going a little slower now than it did the first time I put the water in, which would indicate to me that the filter is starting to clog up a little bit. Again, the reason why to go with 
the coarser grind. And that's the end of my water, so it should be just enough. And it's pouring through. It's not going through really quickly now, but it is. And I'm just about ready to enjoy a cup of coffee. So, let's have a look inside. Not going through really fast, but it's going through at a good speed. If it goes through too fast, you're not going to get all the flavor. If it stagnates too long, it's just going to jam up inside of the filter and, uh, you know, start to become bitter. But that's going through at a good speed. Okay, this is just about finished. I'm going to reposition the camera so I can sit on the side of the lake and enjoy my cup of coffee. Coffee all drained through. can take the two sticks off now. And there's my cup of coffee using the Sea to Summit X Brew. It smells like coffee. All right, that is hot. So uh, it's a hot day. I'm not going to rush to drink that. All right. I'll just let that sit. Oh, well, I sit back on the side of the lake here and enjoy the gentle breeze in my face and beautiful sunny day. So just let's sum this up a little bit. So the X brew has redeemed itself. It is working better now that I understand how to use it. The fact that the stainless steel filter requires a coarser grind of coffee than does a paper filter is important to know. So don't expect to use the same grind you would use for a paper filter. You'll probably have to experiment to get it to just where you want to. Uh, even as I made this, I felt that uh, I probably could have gone just a little finer, so I know we're on my grinder at home where the setting was, and I'll make it just a little finer next time so that it takes a little longer to go through the coffee, the water that is, and make it a little stronger. But if you go too far, then you end up in the same position it was last time where it just stalled out and it just sat there and it wouldn't drain through. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, so yes, the X Brew works. It works with that other mug better. I won't have to, don't have to use the sticks to support the, the X Brew if I use the uh, Seal and Go, the X Seal and Go. It's a nice bug. So if you're looking for something and you don't have one of the either already, then the X Seal and Go is an excellent choice. It really is. It's quite nice. Now I'm thinking about getting the bowl because there's a, an X Seal and Go bowl that goes with it, which would be great for keeping foods warm as well as keeping them from spilling on you. Um, yeah. There are options out there, which is part I wanted to say. The options are, they come very inexpensive, right down to a dollar. Of course, then you have to use paper filters, unless you use that nylon filter. So, you know, there's a couple of different options there. I can't quite like the nylon filter. It's just a bit of work cleaning it. Now, remember, I still have to clean out the x -Brew, and I still have to clean out the stainless steel filter. It's just, it won't hold the flavors like that nylon will if you don't do a good job of cleaning it out. Uh, paper filters are still an option. If you don't mind using paper filters with your pour over, then there's a good number of devices that come very inexpensive. By the way, there are more pour over devices than what I showed you here. Um, there are a number I'm going to, I'll see if I can't put a few pictures on the screen even right now, but I'll put the names in the show notes below for them. I know that, uh, uh, yeah, there's a couple of different brands, well-known brands. Yes, there's even some in titanium, which are way beyond me for, for what they, you know, I don't need a titanium coffee pour over device, but you know, the silicone ones or the plastic ones work just fine for me. Okay, I think I have exhausted pour over coffee in the woods. I, I have used it in other videos. Every so often I'll use pour over coffee when I'm out. So I'll be doing, doing that again and showing that again. If you have any questions about pour over coffee or coffee in general while in the woods, then put them in the comments section below. If you have any comments about any of the devices or any questions about any of the devices I sh showed you today, please put those in the comments section below. If you have experience with the X-Brew and uh, you found it different than my experience, I'd be really interested in hearing that. If you have a better way of making coffee, and don't say the AeroPress because you already know that's my favorite, but if you have a better way of making coffee, then uh, share that with me as well. Okay, that's all I have for you today. It's too nice to sit here and just talk. I'm just going to look out over the lake today. Get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.